passionate because I get to watch the Warriors play the Blazers tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, we're passionate about certain things, as, as, but my passion about my passion towards the Warriors don't compare compare to what my passion is as it relates to the goal that I have in mind, the things I've discovered through scriptures that I've searched out, that I've leaned into, and this is what we have to do. So we can no longer be stigmatized by our religious pedigrees. God wants to erase that. He wants to detox you. You can be detoxed. You don't have to have graven images. You don't have to build uh, subnormal systems. But you can do what Jesus said, that there will be an hour that's coming that we will worship him in spirit and in truth. I want to worship him in spirit and in truth. I don't want big leaves. I don't want to waste my time going through the motions. I want to give God what's, what's his. Amen? I don't want to stagger at the promises of God. I want to receive the reason for why he took me out to bring me in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what we should all want. Mm -hmm. never, we should all want that. We should all want that. Yeah. We want that. We got to have that. That is important. We can't do it without discovering how to detox so we won't find by default that we remain denominated and we remain systemic in our thinking. Just, just Religious. Just religious. I told you, my thing, I, 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 I will not fall in the hand of religion. Now, I may have religious people, but I refuse to condone any form of religion. Now, I mentioned there are some things that religion has it's as far as the structure. Structure is good. I'm going to talk about that next week for promise. I'm going to talk about the contrast between true Christianity and religion. There is a contrast. Tell your neighbor there's a contrast. There's a contrast. There is. There is a contrast. What God has. But if we're going to get to the point, we're going to change the framework of our thinking. Our point of reference as it relates to scriptures. Because some of the things I'm going to share, you can't, you're not going to see it here. But it's going to come out from my life. What I've gleaned for the last 10 years or so. Because it's been... Let freedom ring has been <laughs> resonated in my spirit. Mm -hmm. I can smell religion like I can smell spaghetti. <laughs> I go in anybody's house and I can say, that's spaghetti. <laughs> anybody? Yes, I go in anybody's house, I don't care if you're black or white, I'll tell you if it's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> my senses have been heightened to know certain smells. Yes. Mm -hmm. Likewise in the spirit. Yes. Yes. There are certain things that I've been heightened to. Sure. One of the things is some of the spiritual impediments that we have, and, and, and one of the main things that have made us uh, who we are is, is a religious, our lack of religious, or should I say, our a lack of fortitude that has made us religious. Because we, we, by default, as I always say, by default, not by design. God has a design in mind. Amen. From the foundation of the world, God had a design in mind. Ephesians 2.10 is his design. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which he before ordained that we should walk in. Yes. Talking about walking out, God has given us some things to walk out. Sure. That's why it has to be done line upon line, precept upon precept. So when you get teaching, you get instructions, so, so that leaders can lead you to the destination that God has. Especially bringing you out of the horrible pit out of the miry clay that religion represents. Mm -hmm. So that you can be established on the rock. I don't know about you, but I want to be built on the rock. Yes. Yes, I want to be built on a strong foundation. So that no matter what circumstance come, we're building correctly. Because that's what God wants us to do. And that's what apostles do. They're wise master builders. Yes. You're going to have apostles that come around and want you to build in wisdom. Mm -hmm. So that you can build not just 
generational. I mean, yeah, transgenerational. So it's not just what's in your life. You build something so you can affect generations. That's transgenerational. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen. So that people can see the hope. Because it's what we're building that causes people to have hope. You, you, anybody ever went, did any study on entrepreneurs? I <laughs> guess not. <laughs> it's not a trick question. If you did any study on entrepreneurs and you look at their life, you don't know them. Right? But just looking within that lens that you have, be it a video, be it a book, be it an article, come on, what happens? Because you're tired of where you've been. What happened? Hope comes up. You're like, man. That's what I do when I go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When I go through the epistles and I look through that lens, hope come up on the inside of me. That's why sometimes we get agitated when we lead it in worship. Knowing we come to the house to look through the lens so that what we hear as we go through scripture is to bring hope. I, I mean, you know what, y'all cute, y'all and all that stuff. But that's where he wants to get us to go to, y'all. He wants to. There's a hope in scriptures. There's a hope that God has laid out. Right? Amen. That we don't have to be anything other than God called us to be. Alright, so we're going to embark on this special this fresh teaching on about the characteristics of a religious mind. But I'm going to need you to quote, follow me with this. Repeat after me. Y'all yes, want to repeat after me? Yes. You promise? Yes. yes. Piggy promise? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Say, Father, Father, open our blind eyes. Open our blind eyes. And stop our, our deaf ears. And stop our deaf ears. So we can see you. So we can see you. And hear you. And hear you. As you are. As you are. For you've raised us, you raised raised us, us from the dead religion, from the dead religion that, many of us that many of us grew up in. Grew up in. You, called us you called us forth out of the tombs, forth out of, the tombs of rules and regulations, rules and regulations rituals, and customs, rituals and customs. And you set our foot. And you set our foot. Or should I say, feet. you set our feet. You set our feet. feet. In Mount, Zion, in Mount Zion, with Christ, with Christ. I, promise I promise to participate, to participate in, the life of the Spirit, in the life of the Spirit and walk in conjunction, walk in conjunction to the cadences and in instructions, instructions that I'm going to receive in this new set of teachings. I promise to be led into the perfect law of liberty and reestablished in my identity as the Son of the Most High God. In Jesus' name. Amen. I got 10 minutes. Now, the reason why most of us religion, religious, it's because of what we've received. So teaching and preaching has created this canvas in our mind. And so we've learned to trust what we've heard. And I'm not trying to create any type of disloyalty or for you to be suspicious of anything I'm about to say. But I need you to be sensitive enough to respond to what's going to be said. Yeah. So that it can minister to your spirit. Because yeah. everything you've heard is lodged in your psyche. Yeah. That's why the promise is he bear witness with our spirit. Because mm -hmm. there's going to be uh, an animosity in our thinking. Mm -hmm. Because most of us have been trained. Even I know it when I'm bringing some things and I'm saying certain things. First thing that clicks on, I'm hearing. I have to filter through your thinking. Mm -hmm. When truth comes, it should hit your spirit. Mm -hmm. There should be a response in your belly. Then you try to analyze what's being said. Mm -hmm. Do the analytical part afterwards. Yes. That's right. Just let the spirit bear with us with your spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? So according to what I've read in the whole counsel of God's word, and the limitations of my present awareness, mm -hmm. 
Because it's not always, all of us are always evolving. There's nothing in stone. If it becomes in stone, then we know we're religious. All right? So we have to be progressive. But I know that it's imperative for us to return to the Lord. That means I have to return back to the original design. And what God's intention was from the beginning. Go to Ephesians 3. God has an intention from the beginning. It's up to me as a, as a son, as you prolifically said. You both, everybody co-signed, you got your own tape. <laughs> May your words be held against you in the courts of heaven. Whatever that is. The big books teach us about the courts of heaven and all this. So, uh, Lord. But anywho. Ephesians 3. This is the apostolic charter. Y'all understand what that means? A charter. This is the, this means a structure. These, this is the ordinances that is necessary. So first and foremost, before we deal with the religious mind, you got to understand what was God's original intention. I know most of us are going to say, well, he is intended for us to be saved. Well, yeah, he intended for you to be saved, but that's only half of the gospel. <laughs> you saved for a reason. Tell your neighbors, you saved for a reason. Saved for a reason. Tell them it's time to act like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember, we talked about that, that when there's no king, you do what's right in your own eyes. That's how you know if he's your king. If he's your king, He's your head of your life, and you just can't do what's in your own eyes. Yeah, true. So you're not, you know, operate by your own opinions. Anyway, Ephesians 3. Did I say that? 